Considering that the last couple of weeks have been filled with a lot of drama, it was really nice to see Rachel smile. All right, so cool. I just got here to check out The Bachelorette. We're down to our final six guys right now. And it's just been a lot of drama in the house as she's been going through this process. So I, I just really think it was nice to see her smile. So the guys are finding out who are the one-on-one -on -one dates because there will be three one-on-one -on -one dates and then there's one group date that's three-on-one. -on now, if y'all remember, Brian is the one that was... He took his kiss the first night when they did introductions. They had chemistry from night one. Like the whole tone of their one-on-one -on -one date, because she's like, okay, go ahead and get dressed. But the whole tone was fun and it was easy and it was light. And there just wasn't anything bad about it. You get what I'm saying? So, all right, cool. So Brian put on this really cool blue suit. Rachel is in this all white. She's looking so beautiful. And they're in Geneva, Switzerland. and. They're in this cool ass car and I don't know a whole lot about cars so I couldn't tell you the make or the model, real talk, but it was nice. Now, apparently Switzerland is known for their watches. They've been making watches for well over 100 years, blah, blah, blah. And she takes them to this premier watch maker. And it was like he gushed over just having something nice. I think it was the thought and it was such a nice gift. And I think that you know, on top of Rachel being and like you know friendly and likable and polite and, and and intelligent, even though I question her decision making, but that's just me personally. But she is smart, and 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 I just think that with all of her great attributes and all of her great qualities, I think the fact that she puts thought into things really, really comes across. And I think that gift was just like, wow, thanks, Rachel. You get what I'm saying? That was really cool to see. They're they're sitting down and you know just going through just having this beautiful date. And he's just talking about how grateful he is and how blessed he is and just how happy he is. And she's happy. They're smiling. They're making great eye contact. You know, they're kissing, which leads us to this beautiful conclusion where they're in this hall. And there's what? This four, five string quartet or quintet or little, just playing string. Um, they're playing this beautiful classical music. You know, it's very possible for someone to be very eligible and just not available that maybe they don't want to put themselves out there maybe their last relationship just really left a bad taste in their mouth they could be focused maybe just success was what they were committed to you never know so i believe that it is very normal to have some of these reservations and the questions that she's asking but honestly just watching the date and watching all of their interactions from when they first met Brian is one of those people she had chemistry from day one just real talk and it was kind of like she said like a fairy tale it was kind of like they were in this Disney fairy tale it was so cool and again it's really really evident to see Brian makes her smile and it's not a forced smile because she she gushes and she smiles and she just looks happy and I just want Rachel to be happy that's, that's all I want I just really want her to be happy and I'm hoping that out of these six, wh whomever she chooses, I hope that it's the best choice. I like Eric for her, but that's just me personally. But Brian and Rachel's date was damn near perfect. Damn near perfect from driving through Geneva, having the drinks, drinking the wine, the beautiful watches, just the beautiful conclusion. They're just dancing to this beautiful music. They're playing these strings. And it's all these candles and this beautiful, I don't even know where the hell it was, but it was, it was amazing. So when Brian gets called for the first date, Eric and Peter are talking and, and, and just some of the comments that they made were, you know, they're not questioning their relationship with Rachel, but it's getting down to the wire. The hometown visits are right around the corner. Now, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, back in South Carolina, um, Rachel and Dean had a really good time and again she had a chance just to know a little bit more about him so at this stage it's not so much about the attraction and all that because that's a given so at this point either she has chemistry or attraction with you or she does not the point she's at right now is really really trying to see who could take it to the next level really really trying to see who's husband material who can move past oh we're great friends we have a good time we can laugh oh I think he's hot or whatever like she wants to move past that and she wants to look at the intangibles and those other the qualities that really identify what can make a good husband and she likes Dean she really likes Dean they have a great time um, again one of the qualities and I talked about this in earlier recaps 
she wants someone that can make her laugh. And if you have a good sense of humor, um, if you have an intelligence about you, then that gets you points with Rachel. Rachel loves to laugh. It kind of reminds me of how she was with Will. And when they were in those beautiful cities and she was just trying to create the mood and let the mood create itself and just let romance take over. And she, you know, she's giving Dean this opportunity. So, you know, she's like, put on your Sunday's best. And he's kind of he's trying to figure out what that means, and they end up going to mass. She was just trying to show or share another aspect of herself, and she said her faith is important to her. She's not trying to push her faith upon anyone. She's not trying to convert anybody. She's just she just wants to be able to share that, and at least and at least wants someone that can appreciate, and if not tap into, but at least have a respect and and a, and a sympathy or a sensitivity rather to her her faith and how she practices because that is important to her as well. So I thought in terms of intimacy, it was actually a really cool choice of date to start the date off by going to mass and just sharing that she is she does have a spirituality about her. They leave mass and, and they're enjoying the other parts of their date and she's noticing that it's kind of not going the way she wanted it. You know, he's a little bit reserved, a little bit, you know, just reserved and a little bit down the energy's not right and she's feeling it and she's noticing it so or you could just tell that she's basically like you know just trying to let him know that i, I really brought you here because i wanted you to take advantage of this opportunity i want to take advantage of this opportunity i want us to get to know each other so she is kind of basically being a little bit a little bit direct and a little bit more blunt just to make it a little bit more obvious for him just in case he's not getting it and rachel was picking up that you know, he, something was off, he wasn't himself, he wasn't being vulnerable, he was kind of deflecting, and she was a little disappointed. She really was disappointed because she really wanted Dean to take full advantage of this opportunity, and he wasn't. When you break it down, he's concerned about her reaction to his family when they go to hometowns. If he potentially is one of those ones that's left to go to hometowns. I'm glad to see Dean connect with Rachel and I'm glad that Rachel kind of understood and let him know that your family's not a breaking point it's not a make or break it's just I would like to see another aspect of you your family created who you are they helped create the person you are so it's important for me just to meet them but it's not to determine whether or not you're fit for me which brings us to the third one-on-one -on -one date and that's Peter's one-on-one -on -one date this one was another phenomenal date for Rachel. The cool thing about their date was they get to go to the Swiss Alps. I mean, when you're talking about backdrop or you're talking about something that is just aesthetically beautiful and it just has so much nuance to it, I think it was a really good choice for Rachel to choose that. The helicopter ride, just overlooking the mountains, the snow-capped peaks. So she was talking with Peter and one of the things that she discovered um, on the one-on-one -on -one date was just how he's been feeling um, throughout this process, especially where he is now. And he was just being very honest with her and telling her there are a lot of times, specifically on the days where he didn't get to spend time with her or he wasn't with her, those were times that were tough for him and he actually considered leaving or walking away from the process altogether. Rachel had to admit that she understood that because she was in that situation, when she was on the show last year and she knew how it felt to have those days where you're just like, I don't want to deal with the process. So she felt good about the honesty and the vulnerability and the fact that he was opening up even more so. But it did put her on notice that there is fear with him, not necessarily in the bad way, like he's scared of anything, but he's just being real about this. He's feeling for her. He's falling. He's falling for her. He has feelings for her. And he's not about playing games or investing himself heavily into a process if it doesn't look like he's going to end up with her long term so i can respect that about him i can respect this about all of the guys that are left they all really seem genuinely interested in rachel and they all seem genuinely interested in something long term not just about the prize of catching her or anything just physical like they really really genuinely seem like they're into her so we get to the latter part of their one-on-one -on -one date and Rachel has on a beautiful gown, she's beautiful, and Peter is dressed up, and they look really nice together. Remember, they have similar gaps in their teeth, so they have a lot of similarities, and they're having a great dinner, um, nice wine and all that, and you know, she was just kind of just, you know, kind of saying, like, she wants to learn more about them. They're both feeling good how their families will react to the other, 
Peter has a great feeling. Rachel has a great feeling. And again, they're having a romantic date, a romantic evening. It's a phenomenal date. You see the passion and you see that. And, and even though I had my questions about who she eliminated at this stage and at this stage, what I can say is the remaining men she's connected to. So it was really nice to see how their date concluded. And even while they're having their date, you know, Eric and, and a couple of the other guys are talking and just wondering, you know, how will their date go? How, you know, will Peter open up more? Can he be more vulnerable? And they're, and again, they're hoping that he don't come back because that's one less guy for them to have to worry about. Rachel offers him the rose and they both have an understanding that they both see that they could be with each other long term. And they both understand that the other one is not playing games and, and that the other one is as invested as they are. So she sees that he's invested, he sees she's invested, and they have good feelings about that. So she's giving the rose in good confidence and he's accepting it in good confidence that he's now wasting his time because he's really serious about making Rachel his wife. So while Rachel and Peter are kind of wrapping up their one-on-one -on -one date, the other guys find out about the group date and it's three on one. So it's going to be Adam, Matt and Eric. And they're talking. And again, each one of them is feeling a little bit apprehensive because they didn't get the one on one in Sweden. So they're feeling like, hey, they may be at a disadvantage. So they get to have their group date with Rachel and they they meet her. And this is cobble cobblestone around the bend street village. I don't know. It was so cool where they were. She was letting them know that this is going to be a difficult day and she's got difficult decisions to make. And Adam off the bat just kind of the energy that he was giving. I think he was trying to show he was aggressive and that he was alpha and that he was, you know, showing Rachel that he was making a case and like he was fighting for Rachel. But the energy to me just came off weird and it kind of came off a bit obnoxious. And, and again, I can't be inside Rachel's mind or her head or her soul or her heart, but just looking at her reaction, it just kind of seemed like she was like, whoa, who's this guy? I don't know. I just don't think that it rubbed Rachel the right way. I think she, she, got an impression and it wasn't favorable. And once they ride out to this castle or this, the, I don't know what it was, but it's this banging ass place. And, you know, she's getting able to have a chance to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. She takes Matt and we get a chance to really see a vulnerable side, more so than we've already seen with Rachel. It's like we really got a, another layer peeled back and she's talking with Matt. And basically, she feels like they're exactly alike. She feels like out of the remaining guys, he's the one that's the most to like her in personality and thought process and those things. She starts tearing up because she's talking to him and she's letting him know and she's coming to the realization that it's time to say goodbye. And it was tough for her. It was a very hard goodbye. Up, I mean, as yet, to date, that was the toughest goodbye that she's had to give because... She liked him and she doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but she doesn't want to have anyone staying longer than they need to or that they should. It hurt her, you know, to, to let him go because there was real, real love. And I'm not talking about romantic, but just a, a, an appreciation and a real, just universal love for, for Matt as a person. So later on that evening, Matt is gone and it's Rachel, it's Adam and it's Eric. And Rachel again, looking beautiful. And she's talking to, to, with the two of them. She has to make a very tough decision. She has to make the decision between Adam and Eric. And they have plus and minuses for both. You get what I mean? I just think that when they came down to her making her final decision and she chose Eric to give the final rose to, I think that it goes back to when they had that first discussion, argument, disagreement, what have you, when he actually questioned her about how committed she was to the process. Just like Brian and that first kiss when they first introduced themselves and he got the first impression rose and it's been that from day one. I think that once Eric stood up and asserted himself, I believe that made an impression. I really do. Now we have our final four. We have Brian, Dean, Peter, and Eric. So let me know what y'all think about that. How do you feel about the episode? How do you feel about the dates? Who do you feel should be her fiance? How do you feel? Who do you think will be the one getting down on one knee, you know, asking Rachel to marry him? Who are you rooting for? Are you team Eric? Are you team Dean? Are you team Peter? Are you team Brian? Yo, let everybody know in the comment section below. I want to say thank you very much for checking out the review. Don't forget to like and comment and share. Subscribe to my videos. I'm Jaden Nerd, and I'm going to talk to y'all next time.